Hello Africa, welcome to another edition of AAU Talks on AAU TV. My name is Sedi Kwashiga. We are coming to you live from the studios of the Association of African Universities here in Accra, Ghana. And you can catch us on YouTube and on our Facebook channels. Today we'll be discussing a, quite an important topic actually. And um, I have here with me a representative from the International Open University. I'll introduce him after the break. And uh, when, we, when we come back, we'll dive into the discussion. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. As I said before the break, we'll be speaking to a rep from the International Open University on uh, the future of online education in Africa. So today I have here with me Mr. Samuddin Yusif, who is the International Open University country representative for Ghana. Mr. Mr. Samuddin, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> as I said before we went for the break, we are looking at the future of online education in Africa. And education is highly or widely regarded as the key to ending poverty. And it is so important that it has been added to the Sustainable Development Goals, which is uh, goal four, which is quality education. And since it is going to help us um, achieve Sustainable Development Goal one, which is no poverty, could you just let us understand how uh, good education can, in the long run, help us overcome poverty? Alhamdulillah. Um, actually, there is um, a very strong relationship between education and poverty. What I mean by the strong relationship is that there are two schools of thought that think, should everybody be educated or we should limit education to some people? Mm -hmm. I tow between the middle path that education should be given to everybody in the sense that when people are educated, they are well informed. Yeah. They can be able to make basic decisions mm -hmm. for themselves as to how life is all about. Yeah. Because if we are talking about poverty, we are talking about somebody being able to provide a meal for himself. Either the three square meal or a meal on the ideal basis. So how do we achieve this thing? It means that somebody has to be able to work. Mm -hmm. And if you need to work, you need to have some skill. Yeah. Either you go through the, the normal education mm -hmm. or you go through the vocational education yeah. to gain some skill. Mm -hmm. With that skill, you can be able to learn a trade. When you learn a trade, you find a job. Mm -hmm. When you find a job, either you, you create a job yourself or you find a job by applying for it. Yeah. Because once you're able to get a job for yourself or you create a job for yourself, you are able to earn some income. Once you earn an income, you can be able to provide meal for yourself. I mean, achieve the basic needs that we need, yeah. shelter, um, food, clothing. clothing, and all this education and all this. So if we are able to be given the right education, education that gives us the skill or the tool that we need to be able to um, find a job or create a job for ourselves, mm. we are able to provide our own basic needs. And if we are able to provide our own basic needs, remember, we are working towards reducing poverty in your own home. Yeah. So if every poverty. individual is yeah. able to create a job for himself, he's able to solve the problem of poverty in his house, mm -hmm. you're able to solve the problem of poverty in your house, yeah. collectively, the yeah. problem of the continent yeah. adds poverty we find means to reduce it. 
Okay. So as important as education is, there are some challenges that uh, our institutions face, mm -hmm. be them funding, uh, infrastructure, sometimes even some educational policies that don't work too well for them. What, what is the way to go? Yeah, I, before I come into this, you see, because of this relationship between education and poverty, you see that all African countries or most of the African countries mm -hmm. are working towards making primary and secondary education free. You can see that yeah. because, as I said, the two streams, mm -hmm. giving education to everybody or limiting somebody. So if all people are able to get access to education through the free education policies that is running through Africa, mm -hmm. Ghana, Tanzania, Uganda, Sierra Leone, and all these things, it's a good move, mean that a lot of people are going to get education. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that comes is, when we graduate from the high school, where do we go? Of course, you need to look for a higher education that is if you want to go to the other side because we need researchers to be able to research out and come out with issues and find solutions to them. But the reality of the matter is the traditional universities are faced with so many constraints. One, infrastructure is a problem. Yeah. Space is a problem. Getting access to lecturers, um, building more labs, there are a, a lot of technical challenges there, okay? And so, if all these students graduate from the high schools, where are they going? Who is going to accept them? So, this is, these are some of the challenges that we have that is facing us. But the reality is, we need to face this as a continent. Mm -hmm. How do we address it? So, going forward, we need to look for innovative ways that we can be able to solve that challenge. If you look at it, uh, 1.1 billion people are living in Africa, yeah. okay? And if you look at this, majority of people in Africa, are below the youth are yeah. below 30%, okay? And if you look at it, only 6% of African youth are able to access tertiary education as compared to the global average of 26%. My question is, what happens to the 94% of people who are not able to attain the tertiary education? <laughs> so you see, invariably, there's higher demand for, for higher tertiary education. education. There's no doubt. But the constraints that are on them, on government, government have so many things at hand yeah. to provide for this, provide for that, provide. So the university themselves also, because most of them receive funding from the government, so you see the constraint that comes. So the way forward is we need to find innovative ways. And one of such ways, as is seen, is going the ODL, open distance and learning. learning education, is one of the key ways. For example, the online institution. Coming from my background in the International Open University, the Gambia, we are looking at um, taking advantage of online, mm -hmm. okay, with its all advantages of unlimited space, flexibility, yeah. less cost, to be able to ensure that we can be able to give access to people. So with the International Open University, we are working towards that very strongly yeah. on how as an institution we can also contribute to the challenge mm -hmm that is facing Africa or the continent at large. So we are focusing on making our programs very accessible. Of course, you know the programs that we offer, banking and finance, psychology, education, business administration, information technology. These are the courses that we, these are the skills that we need as a continent. So we are believing that whatever can be taught online can be taught. So we, this is the way forward we are going. So as we go, the challenges that are, are there, if we are, trying to look for the innovative ways. Of course, it comes with so many challenges. One is the issue of internet, okay? Yeah. Number two, uh, access to PC, computer. Yeah. Even though we are trying to make education accessible to everybody, it's not everybody ha that has computer, access to yeah. computer. Of course, we have tried to create the systems where you can even use your uh, smartphones Smartphone. to access education online. but. 
what happens if somebody is online? Because if you are on, on the internet, there are so many things that comes. Yeah. So we're looking at other ways of trying to get the people to give them a bit of uh, a classroom environment, for example. So we should have learning centers across where people can sit down and study. Because we cannot make internet available to everybody at a time. But if you have an, a learning center, a point, and that learning center, of course, we are looking at that. But if you are looking at it at a bigger picture for the continent, this is what Africa is now starting to look at. Because the infrastructural base that are required mm -hmm. to make uh, internet accessible, computer accessible, is one of the directions that, as Africa, we need to look at. How can we make internet cheap? and how um, fast and accessible to the people, yeah. okay? We should have learning centers. At least every country, you can have one multi-purpose learning center in every region or provinces that you find yourself mm -hmm. so that people can go and access courses and all these things. So if we are able to get things of this nature, it can help in advancing the cost of making education accessible to the people. Okay, so as you've mentioned, uh, using the internet has its own challenges. challenges. What strategies in your experience do you think um, can help to bridge this gap? Some very practical examples. Practical possibly example. Possibly things that you have done at your institute. Okay, for us, for example, as an open university, we have come to realize that making education is a right for everybody yep. and so of course, you know the cost associated with universities. It's very expensive sometimes. And we have tried to make our um, programs as affordable as possible. We charge as low as $70 for a program. So in a whole four-year program, you pay less than $500, depending on the country. Well, what, what is the standard? Yeah, it, it is a range, depending on the income level of the country. Okay. In Ghana, for example, we pay $90 per semester. So a whole four-year program is $720. Okay. In Sierra Leone, they pay $70. In the US and UK and other developed countries, yeah. they pay uh, $120. So it's a, it's a range that we are looking at. Okay. Even with this one, people are finding it difficult to be able to, to afford it. Afford it. Yeah. Okay. Not to talk of that. So we have introduced two projects. Mm -hmm. okay. We have the, um, the scholarship project mm -hmm. where our target is to make of course we have two stream um, scholarship that is open to everybody mm -hmm. then we have introduced this one million scholarship project for Africa okay. what we mean is by the end of 2030 mm -hmm. when we are counting for our SDGs we want to see that we are able to build a capacity of one million youth and how we going to do it or what we are doing is we are sharing it, we are doing a pilot test okay. with the African countries, English speaking mm -hmm. African countries, mm -hmm. because you know it's very expensive to yeah. operate such. So, for example, in Ghana, our goal is to give 100,000 scholarships to people in Ghana or Ghana as a country, okay. 100,000 to Sierra Leone, 100,000 to Nigeria, to Uganda, to Malawi. These English speaking countries, so this is one of the means that we have made to be able to make sure that education become accessible, accessible to the people. Yeah. And two, there are challenges that come with this. The internet is a, is a big issue. Yeah. Okay, so what we have done is we are also now looking at partnership, okay, with all the developmental partners. And this is where I think that we have to come in mm -hmm. to build the learning centers. Okay, the telecommunication industries should also come to our aid to make uh, internet accessible to the people. So we are building learning centers and then giving out the one million scholarship project. Okay. This is the micro from us, yeah. but as the macro level, as a, as a continent level, what we need to do is um, our development partners are doing so much in terms of improving access at the traditional universities, mm -hmm. but it's very expensive. Yeah. So the reality is that have to invest a lot in the infrastructure that is required for online university to take effect. Okay, so as a seconder, we need to think about how are we going to make internet very easy and affordable to the people. That's one. We know the history of India, for example, 
they've made the internet accessible and they went in to, devo uh, to develop computers yeah. as cheap as $20 yeah. so that everybody can have access to computer to its, its home. So there's nothing wrong um, learning from other people and bringing it to ourselves. So as a continent, we have a unique problem. We, we need to find a unique solution to our unique problem. Okay. So if we have identified that our traditional university system mm -hmm. is not able to absorb the graduate that come from the higher education, yeah. then as on the continent level, we need to now see that, okay, how can we use an innovative means, that's the online. Okay. So if we are convinced that we want to use the online, then the next thing is let's brainstorm. How do we make it to make an online university become easy or the quality is assured at all stages? Yeah. Okay, so what do we need? We need an infrastructure. We need to improve the curriculums. Then accreditation boards have to come on board. How can we look at it to be sure to be able to ensure that what is being developed at each stage carry out the quality that we are all looking at? Okay, so if we brainstorm, so many issues come in. So our development partners should look at how are we going to make sure that in every country we need to have a, a one-stop shop learning center. It can be used as um, entrepreneurship uh, breeding point, ideas for a lot of, so if we have um, an office, a bigger office with um, computer infrastructure, with internet co fully connected, students who are schooling at home and do not have access can take advantage of such center. So our development partners should look at that. For example, if you take Ghana as a country, for example, in each of the 10 regions that we have or plus regions that we have, we should have a learning hub in Ghana. Okay. So and will that be the responsibility of the government? Or government or alone cannot do this job. It is too much for the government. Mm -hmm. Government has a lot in its hand. Yeah. So the development partners have it. You know, if you look at uh, the Islamic perspective, there's something they call um, leaving something that can bring you reward even after your death. They call it Sadaqat Jariya. Something that you can gain benefit even after you are dead. One of them is digging a well. If you dig a well, people will continue to drink from the well. If you construct a bridge, people can cross a bridge. If you build a school, people will continue to learn. So there are certain things that, you know, you can't carry everything when you are gone. Yeah. But there are some works that good deeds that when you leave and not behind, it will bring you more reward even after your death. That is the only thing you can take with you, your good deeds. Yeah. So, though government, we are all looking at government do this for us, government, we as an individual, with the question we need to ask ourselves as individuals, at corporate institutions, philanthropies and everybody is, when I should die and go off, what am I leaving behind that will continue to bring reward or reach me even after I've gone? Okay, so the government is doing its part, mm -hmm. but as an individual level, as corporate level, what, what, how are we using our corporate social responsibilities? Okay. You are a viable company that is making a lot of money. Okay, you are involved in corporate social responsibility. Where are you channeling your corporate social responsibilities? These are some of the things. Okay, so does it fall on these um, our educational institutions to approach some of these organizations? That these are the plans that we have in mm. mind. If in any way you can lend a hand, then yeah, this it's is a how you it's can a two-way affair. As institutions, of course, we need to reach out to people, develop our proposals and everything, and reach out to people. Yeah. Of course, um, if you have the infrastructure, like our case, we are making it known that we need learning centers. So there will be somebody who is selling, who is into um, uh, IT equipment, selling IT stuff, okay. who has access computers. Okay, okay, I'm donating hundred computers to the Ghana government. Okay, I'm in the northern region. I'm in the central region. This is what I'm doing. I have got the love enough. Mm -hmm. um, the people are contributing me. How am I going to give back to the society? Okay. okay, you talk to the appropriate authorities. Okay, I'm building a, 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 a two or three classroom fully fitted with internet. I'm giving solar, I'm giving electricity, everything, commission it, give it to the government. You, one, an, one company, or two or three companies can come together, individuals can come together and build one learning center, for example, a, star, a learning hub, and give it back to the government so the government will look at how to make it easily accessible to the people. So either you manage it, it's a two-way affair, you can manage it on your own. 
-hmm. as an individual corporate institution. This is what we are doing. And I've seen so many companies that are doing that. They build mm -hmm. infrastructure and leave it there as a library where students can go there and learn. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways. Okay. And then on, the, on the higher government level, we have to look at how we can share portion of our educational budget okay. into developing the online infrastructures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, viewers. Uh, this is uh, an interesting discussion, but uh, we'll go for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue with uh, Mr. Yusuf. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, if you are just joining us, we are discussing the future of online education in Africa. And we have with us Mr. Samudin Yusuf, who is the country representative for Ghana for the International Open University. Okay, uh, Mr. Yusuf, let's look at a perception of uh, online education. Some people prefer that you actually physically were in an institution and you received your education there as opposed to um, getting your degree online. Why is that and how can we change that? Does it have to do with people feeling that online education is not of the same quality as like going to a school physically? What, 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 what is the reason behind this? Yeah, there are so many studies when it comes to challenges of open universities. And one of them that I've read uh, is one study conducted in the Kane University in Ghana here. And the finding is because of the challenges and perceptions people hold about online education, people prefer to go to a traditional university despite their cost and all these things. Yes, um, look at, let's look at it. When you tell somebody you had a certificate online, how would people feel like? the corporate institutions mm -hmm. or your own colleagues come on online university what is it you know but is it something that we need to correct and it behold on all of us the employers and then the universities as well because in the point of um, the life of every student or a scholar at a point somebody take a course online because there's a study that 86 percent of the graduate that graduate from the US take at least one single course online. Okay. Okay. So going forward, we need to be able to work on um, in, uh, changing the perception that we have about online university. Because assuming you are going for uh, a job interview mm -hmm. and everybody is having a university, I don't want to name the universities mm -hmm. from a particular country or, and you are telling the people that I have my university online. 
you see people will have some yeah. perception or when you are going to further your education in a traditional university and you tell them that i got my certificate online yes of course um there are so many fake issues fake mm -hmm. certificates on as far as online education is concerned okay. but there are genuine ones as well yeah. okay so it's a collective responsibilities knowing very well that we have a unique challenge as a continent african continent and we want to find it now we need to fine tune the online education system okay. so that we can remove this uh, chaff or the fake yeah, ones that are existing we need to streamline everything because with this when we are able to streamline things and able to identify those that are given authentic or high quality education as against others yeah. then you see that it becomes easy then that's one side of it our employers once you know that this person had this certificate from an uh, from a, a university that has been vetted well mm -hmm. you need to employ the fellow give him equal opportunity for employment all right yeah. the, the tertiary institutions should also be able to accept people who get certificates online from sources that are okay accept them to do their uh, advance their studies in their traditional universities so when we are able to do this yeah. then it instills some confidence in people who are going to, to, to who are going to access education online i remember in ghana some time ago we started some a tv program uh, the presidential special initiative on design education where people can yeah, learn yeah. english math and science at home yeah. This is a very good initiative, but we need to advance it, make it more acceptable, s find out the, the challenges that comes with it and resolve them. When we're able to resolve them, employers are um, giving equal opportu employment opportunity to people who also get education online and those who investors are able to accept. It is able to, we can be able to, in a way, deal with the issue of perception. And of course, uh, it comes with my, uh, my marketing background. We need to give a lot of um, awareness creation we need to sensitize the public about online education and uh, how the, ch the, the I mean what is available okay. the practically when you look at the content of online education mm -hmm. sometimes it's a lot there's a lot of things that you need to cover up mm -hmm. and as an institution we have we've taken note of that and that is why we have over 80,000 learning centers across the globe and mm -hmm. we have country offices where people go there to take their final year examination under supervision Okay, so it because it's online doesn't mean you can cheat. No, yeah. you have to write it under supervision, like it's going on in the traditional school. And your assignment I for our system is you we are using the very site. Okay, so you tr you write your assignment, you need to upload it through a very site. Once we identify that you copy from sources, your assignment is cancelled. You need to redo your assignment as well. Okay. And we are using the Moodle system where um, examination is conducted in a fair manner because when we are all doing IT for example, or we are doing banking and finance, we are writing the same paper. Your question is entirely different from my question. Your question one might be question 50 of yours. Okay. So these are the system that we have been able to put in okay. place. Okay. And before you even write an examination in any of our centers, we demand that you prove the ID card okay. that shows that it is you so, so that nobody can come and write, write your you. assignment for you. So on the quality assurance level, this is what we are doing and more because there are so many advancements, you know, technology is evolving yeah. all the time. So we are also ready to fine tune all and bring everything that is required to make sure that anybody that take an examination or graduate from our, our school mm -hmm. and bearing our certificate represent what he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So your institution, the International Open University, the Gambia, um, yeah. is organizing a scholarship program. Yeah. Can you just tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, the one million scholarship project, as I indeed indicated earlier on, is as a university, the question we have asked ourselves is the SDG has come. The MDGs went. Mm -hmm. We corrected ourselves and we brought up the SDG. Um, we one of the key is to um, fight poverty, okay, and poverty yeah. in all forms, okay. As an institution, the question we ask is, what is our contribution to achieving the strategic development goal one, mm -hmm. ensuring poverty? So we brainstorm that, okay. Education, there's a strong relationship between education and poverty. So if we are uh, an, a, a higher institution that is building the capacity of people, then why don't we build the capacity of people? Because once we are, we, we've established already the relationship between Edu poverty and education. So based on this, we are now looking forward to giving up one million scholarship to Mother Africa. 
and somebody will ask why Africa because we need it more <laughs> okay so this is what we are doing and it's open to everybody okay. there's no discrimination once you meet the criteria what is the criteria what is what is it that the traditional universities are requiring for somebody to be able to get access to territory. How many credits are you supposed to make? Is it the WASI in Ghana, West Africa Examination Certificate Examination, the SSE, O level, A level, whatever is being established as an entry point into the university, that is what we are sitting. The fact that we are online doesn't mean we should compromise on quality. No, okay. we are insisting that you get the required marks that is required. Because the scholarship is so competitive, we have put in some criteria. One, after establishing the fact that you can, you can, you are competent, uh, qualified to enter the university. The next thing is, are you able to study online? Okay. So we've put in a requirement where you take a, a free course, okay. just two courses, just to be able to enable her to assess how you can be able to study online. Okay. okay. Then, once you are able to get that requirement, we now look at once you are able to get that requirement, you are you just apply online or call any of our offices, mm -hmm. you come, you put in your documentations, your certificate, your ID and everything. Uh, once you qualify that this is okay, we establish that you really need a scholarship. Of course, we award the scholarship straight away to you. So, yes, it is there, but you need to follow the procedure. You can call our numbers, visit our website, write to our help desk. They give you the requirement that is required to be able to get that access to that scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the learning center. So, Though we are saying this, we as a university, we need to accept the reality that we cannot be able to do it across everywhere because issue of electricity is there, issue of internet is there. So we are trying to, I mean, get the student together at a particular point, as we call the learning centers, okay? Yeah. Now in Ghana, at least in each of the region, we have a learning center, though okay. there are different stages of development. Okay. Same in Nigeria, same in other countries. So we are building our learning center. So once we give you the, uh, the scholarship, we need you to be able to come there to, uh, to study, we counsel, we discuss, we have all these things. So this is what we are doing on our level. Okay. Uh, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, a major challenge of online education is cost. Yeah. And um, you're, as one of the ways to deal with that, yeah. your institution has come up with a scholarship program. Yeah. Um, in your experience so far, how is the best way to, to manage manage this? Because as you mentioned earlier, government has so many things that they are doing. And even you mentioned that your your prices are subsidized, but people still find it a little difficult yeah. sometimes to, to afford it. What more can we do? Yeah, there's a lot that we can do as a continent. We still come back to individual corporate institutions. Okay, yes, the cost of higher education yourself, you know, is very expensive to go to school. And so we, at a point, we ran a campaign that with $100, you can be able to change the life of a student. And a lot of people bought into the idea. People came forward and said, I'll sponsor 10 students, I'll sponsor 20 students, I'll sponsor 30 students. And they pay the money. So they have given us a responsibility. They've given us that, okay, this is my $800, or this is my $200, or this is my $300. Give higher education to somebody. And that's how come we have come to this. Okay. So everybody is helping. You can help. You are home. What can you do? Is it that you can sponsor a student? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or your corporate social responsibility is you can build a learning center. You can go ahead with that. This is for our side. In the other side, you can, as a corporate institution, in a way to solve, give it back to the society. You can visit the schools. We have X amount of money. This is what we are giving out. Give it to the people who need it, okay, to get access to education. So it's a collective responsibility. It is not the work of only the government. It is um, a, a work of all of us. Look, even myself, if I have money, or I can even give, okay, this one CD that I have, I'm putting the one CD here. Anybody who needs to get to school, the institution should give it to him. So everybody can do it. Government is doing its part. Mm -hmm. But we need a corporate institution to come forward. Okay, this is what we are giving out of our profit to education. So you give it that the appropriate context. But of course, we need to lay the structures very well so that whatever anybody contributes, 
get to where it's supposed to be because the issue of accountability is something that we also need to look at so everybody can come forward but how can they come we the institutions the government institution need to be able to lay the structure the proper structure so that it make it somebody easy to put his money somewhere and when somebody put his money somewhere we should be able to use it for the purpose for which the person put it and at the end of the day we let the individual see that oh when i put this x amount of money this, this is the student that i've been able to generate so when we are able to do it collectively we can do something it's not a simple thing it's a process we can do it gradually gradually but we still get there for us in as international open university we are doing our best we are giving up this scholarship and we hope other institutions will open their scholarship doors to the people so that collectively we can be able to solve the issue of uh, higher education in Africa. Okay, uh, finally, let's look at another important aspect of education, which is uh, quality assurance. Mm. Uh, because online, because of the, the nature of online education, lots of people may not always be in schools for supervisors or whomever to constantly have an eye on them to ensure that they are doing things the way they are. You've mentioned a few things that your institution does, mm. but generally, as a continent, what can we do to ensure that um, the quality of online education is, is high enough that we can possibly move and have both the traditional forms of um, higher education and online, possibly integrating and then making it um, accessible to many, many more people. Yeah, thank you. It's the once we have had accepted the reality that we need to go online. Now, in all our institutions, the Ministry of Higher Education or the Accreditation Board, mm -hmm. we should have a deliberate. We should take a deliberate step. Okay, I create a department for open and distance education at the policy level, because once we have a unit that is responsible for online education. The unit will now sit down, make this, put in the structures, what is required to make sure that this is done, what is required to make sure that this is done. So the first step is we should create a unit. At, at the ministerial level, at the policy level, we should have a unit. We have a department that this is going to cater for online education. So once that unit is created as a step, now the unit will now be able to come out with standards that need to be measured, uh, to be followed. Okay, so once the standard is established, now if you are in an online business and you want to be given that recognition, the unit will follow the standard that has been established. Okay. Go through the processes, what is going to measure. Because they will come, once the standard is established, it clearly defines what should be done at each stage. Mm -hmm. So all online universities now have to conform because one all in online education have to have confirmed mm -hmm. and the ministry or the um, the authority responsible um, become satisfied with what has been established then it becomes easy for us to go forward mm -hmm. because there are uh, we have uh, uh, issues of uh, curriculum mm -hmm. as as point and then this question of how do we ensure that uh, what you are learning is, is the right thing. Nobody is writing your examination. Right. Because yeah. if we have such a department that is focusing alongside a traditional university, looking into a whole, uh, reviewing the whole system of online education, they can come out with a standard. So once this standard is established, it becomes easy, very easy for us to integrate the uh, online education into the normal education system. So okay. this is, I mean, there are so many possible ways, but this is what I look at as a step. We need to convince ourselves that we are ready for it, okay? Yeah. Then we need to create the units, the department, that will be that. So once the units are created, then all those who are offering credible online education need to come forward and meet the standard. So those that are able to come forward boldly and meet the standard, they keep on moving. But those that are fall short, we see how we can help them and mm -hmm. upgrade them to be able to, to come to the standard, standard that we are requesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's been a very informative discussion, but mm. if you have any last words, final words that you'd like to share with Africa, I think this is your chance to yeah, do Yeah, as, as a continent, like I said, we have a unique challenge mm -hmm. and we need to have a unique solution to it. Getting higher education, meeting the, 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 the gap between higher education is a collective responsibility. The government has a role to play. We, the individual, have roles to play. And for us as International Open University, 
we are doing our best trying to give out this one million scholarship. It can't work alone. We need more learning centers. And we, we are calling on corporate institutions in every country, Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Uganda, wherever, come to our aid. We need more learning centers. Devote your learning center for us, okay? I have this place, this is what I want you to do. We go into it, look at it, make uh, internet accessible to the people, then people can, can be able to. So we are inviting everybody to on board. If we want to achieve that one million scholarship project, then International Open University, the Gambia alone, cannot do it. But we need Africa. We need everybody to come to our aid, to assist us and other sister universities so that we can be able to make higher education accessible to this continent, so that we can rewrite the story of this continent. This continent is known to be poor, but we have what it takes to come out of this poverty. But it's not only the work of one person. All of us have to come together and we can be able to change Africa from where it is as a poor country to a competitive world where everybody will have a three square meal, God willing. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is a very good aspiration to have. Uh, hopefully someday we'll see Africa transformed. Uh, viewers, we've been discussing the future of online education in Africa and we had Mr. Samudin Yusuf, the country representative for International Open University, the Gambia to discuss with us. I hope you enjoyed the discussion and we'll come again next time. Please stay tuned to other programming from AAU TV.